Why, hello there! Welcome to my final installment in my awesome hardware cornhole boards video series. If you have not yet seen part one and part two of this video series, you can uh, click on this video right up here to see the construction process, and this video right down here to see how I went about painting them and all that good stuff. I will also place links to both videos in the description down below, as well as up in the cards over here, ish. Yeah, right up here. Now, in both of those videos, my intros to them were way too long, and that is a mistake I do not intend to duplicate right now. So, let's go. So today, I am going to be showing you guys how... Okay, I... I don't know how to sew. I had to enlist my mom's help with this particular project. But thanks to her help, I am able to make this video today and share with you guys how to make a set of cornhole bean bags. More specifically, I'm going to be showing you guys how we made the set of bean bags for the cornhole boards that I sent to Paul and Kyle, the hosts of the popular live YouTube tech show, Awesome Hardware. Now for your cornhole game, you're going to be making eight bags total. Traditionally, you have four red bags and four blue bags. But because of the highly custom nature of the boards I made, I decided to diverge from the traditional colors and go with something that would better match the boards. The first thing you're going to need is some duck canvas. You can buy this at any fabric store. Again, typically you'll want to buy about a half a yard of red and a half a yard of blue, which should be more than enough to make your full set of eight bags. If you want to make multicolored bags like I chose to do, then of course you'll want to pick up enough of the colors you're going to be using to complete all of your bean bags. Your finished bean bag should measure six inches square. We chose to give ourselves a half inch seam allowance all the way around our bags, which means you're going to need to cut out a total of 16 seven inch squares, eight of each color. Once again, because of the highly custom nature of the boards and bags we're making here, we had to start out with 8 inch squares because we needed our squares to fit into an embroidery hoop and 7 inch squares just weren't quite large enough to make it. For the bags we're making here, we needed 4 white squares, 4 pink squares, and 8 black squares. Once we had all our squares cut, it was time for us to do some embroidering. My mom has a pretty nice Bernina sewing machine that happens to have an embroidery attachment for it. so. I just couldn't send the guys plain colored bags when I had the ability to take it to the next level. I have to give a big shout out to Todd at Janine's Bernina for all his help on this project. We had three different logos to embroider onto these bags and he helped us digitize all of them. So all we had to do was thread the machine, fit the squares into the embroidery hoop, and the machine did all the rest. Once the embroidery work was finished, we then cut down our 8 inch squares to 7 inch squares and then it was time to move on to the next step of sewing the two sides of the bags together. With the designs embroidered onto our bags, we had to make sure that we carefully matched the sides up so that all the bags would be identical and so that our embroidered logos would all be facing the correct way. This is of course something you don't need to worry about when you're making more traditional styles of bags. 
In order to make our bags nice and strong, my mom straight stitched around the edges of the bags three times and then went around one final time with a zigzag stitch. She of course made sure to leave an opening on one of the sides so we could fill the bags up with corn later on. One little tip that she showed me was to trim off all the corners of the bags just like so. Uh, the bags are going to need to be turned right side out eventually and eliminating that little bit of excess fabric makes turning out the corners just that much easier. And that, my friends, leads us into the next item on our agenda, turning the bags right side out. I found my mom to be much faster at this than I am. I think she was able to turn out three or maybe even four of them in the time it took me to do one. At this point, we took a few minutes to admire our handiwork and then moved on to the next step of adding the corn. Uh, traditionally, cornhole bags are filled with corn feed, but I've heard stories of people's bags getting infested with bugs and other things. So, personally, I like to use popcorn uh, because I feel it's less likely to have those kinds of problems and uh, all the bags I've made using popcorn uh, have all been fine so far, knock on wood. Each one of your cornhole bags should weigh between 15 and 16 ounces, which works out to be about two cups of popcorn or so in each bag. Now, I'm one of those personality types that uh, doesn't even want to have an ounce of variation from one bag to another, so after the initial fill, I ended up using a food scale to weigh each bag individually and made sure each bag weighed exactly 16 ounces. With all of our bags at the appropriate weight, it was then time to finish things off and sew them all shut. My mom used a nice little technique of pinning the corn back away from the opening of the bag using some safety pins. Uh, this allowed enough space for the sewing machine to get in there and do its job. She sewed back and forth several times to ensure we had a good, strong seam. Since our bags were multicolored, we used a different color thread in the bobbin than what was on the spool, so when our bags were all sewed up, things looked nice and clean. Now, as I'm sure you can tell here, it's not 100% perfect. We did have a little bit of thread from the one side showing through on the other side of the bags like you can see here, but thankfully my mom knew that this might happen and planned it out so that this was very easy for us to fix using a permanent marker. And with that, our bags are complete and ready for some play testing, I think. Okay, really, I just wanted to get some footage of the bags side by side with the boards, as well as do a little play test on the boards. And yeah, in my opinion, the bags and boards turned out absolutely amazing. And I was so happy to be able to see Kyle open up his board live on Awesome Hardware which uh, you guys can actually check out by clicking this video right here or by selecting it in the cards. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you found it informative and helpful and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, if you did, then I would ask you to please click that like button before you go. And also, I would ask you to please consider subscribing to my channel. If you'd like to ask me a question or you just want to say hi, uh, you can use that comment section down below and I will do my very best to answer the questions you might have as well as return your salutations. Now before I head out, I just want to say thanks so much for hanging out with me and for watching the video. I hope that you have an absolutely amazing day and I look forward to hanging out with you again next time. Later.